Okay, good morning, everyone. We're learning a, spe a speech which the Rebbe, Lubavitcher Rebbe gave. This is a speech which the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave in which year? One second, I forgot. Give me a second here. In the year 19... Sixty. One second. Uh, 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 here it is. Two. 1962. And it's talking about this week's Torah portion. The word tai means to be carved out. And it also means a type of commandments which are not understandable. So the Rebbe is going to ask why is the whole Torah portion called on the name of commandments which are not understandable. Which is the minor part of the commandments. Those are commandments like don't eat milk and meat and the red cow, you know, a person that touches a dead body, you sprinkle the red cow ashes on him. And so these make no sense and they're not even religious commandments. Right? It's got nothing to do with, with the Jewish religion. What is not eating milk and meat together? According to Judaism, you're not allowed to cook milk and meat together. Just to boil it is already a sin. So why could that, what possible function could that, that's called huko, huko, Chukot, chukot. And there's a very minor part of, of the Jewish commandments. So why call the whole Torah portion on that? And the Rebbe's going to answer that. Okay. Oifen Pasuk on the sentence, in lecho, if you walk in my statutes, if you walk in my statutes, my statutes, zogdem sifra, it says sifra. Sifra is the midrash on the book of Leviticus. It's also called Torah Kahanim, Kohanim. In it says, um, and Rashi, and Rashi also brings it over here in, in our Torah portion. Rashi is Rabbi Shlomo Yitzchaki. He's the main commentator on the Torah. Yochal Elu Mitzvahs. You might think that these are the commandments. Chukotai means the commandments. <coughs> right? Chukotai, that's one type of command <coughs> commandments, like I just said. Also, it's a strange language. Telechu, if you walk. Now, you have to remember another thing. God wrote the Torah. It's not Moses wrote the Torah. Moses did not write the Torah. God told Moshe what to write. But everyone heard God speak. They saw God face to face. That's what it says on Mount Sinai, whatever that means. They all saw God on Mount Sinai. Everyone saw the Creator. They saw God at Mount Sinai. And they said, we can't take it. It's too much of a revelation. Moses, you go up and... Tell us what God wants. So Moses went up and he came down and he brought the, 40 days later, he brought the, the whole Torah. After the, 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 in the beginning, Moses just brought the tablets, which had the Ten Commandments on it. But after that, he brought the whole Torah. So the whole Torah is written by God and every letter is exact what God says to this very day. If there's one letter that's improper or missing in the Torah, then you, you can't read from that Torah. You have to fix that letter up. And then you can read it. So every single word, every letter, this is not just a religious book by Moses telling us how to get into heaven. This is written by the God who's creating us right now. He's creating me and you and the whole entire world right now, and which is pretty important. You know, if one little if a corpuscle or something in your body goes wrong, there's, there's billions of bodies, human beings around, then it doesn't, something's wrong. So the same thing is with the Torah. The Torah is the blueprint. So if one little thing is missing, so there's something basically wrong with the whole Torah, and you have to fix it up. You have to fix up the letter. So every word is exact, and every word comes to teach us something. That's the point. It's called Torah because God called it the Torah. Zota Torah, this is the Torah, because it means instruction. Okay, so what's in it? what are we being instructed by over here? It says, if you walk in my chukotai, my, my statues, my laws, you might think, what does it mean you walk in the law? You're doing the commandments. You're doing the commandments. It says, you might think it says, there's no, if you look at the next sentence, it says, Uva mitzvot it says, if you walk in my statutes and you do my commandments. So the next sentence says, talks about the commandments. So what is this one talking about? It says, amalim Torah. Here it means that you should work hard at learning the Torah. Learning the Torah. Learn more than you want to learn. Don't stop learning until you get the proper understanding of the Torah, you should search. Torah you should be a, a, a very important thing in your life. Torah should be a very important, as important as money. Huh? 
ideally more important than money, but the things that are money making you willing to take out your time, that's how the important the Torah should. Just like people work at their business and would think about it all day and night in the stock market, whatever, that's how you should be thinking about the Torah. You can think about business also. Nothing wrong with thinking about business, but your main thought should be thinking about the Torah. Is made, this is not talking about doing the commandments. Baltash Tate says later on at Mitzvot Tishmru. Nor vos main What does it mean when it says you should walk in my statutes? The result that it result of heart of it and that you should work hard in the Torah, learning the Torah, understanding the Torah, understanding. We're talking about essentially learning the the the, the Talmud and the ideas of the Torah. Understand? We have to understand. If going in my statutes means the commandments, as Voltman done. Can in Masbu, we can understand what it means, er darmant nit nor chukim, why it's only talking about the chukim. Even though that in the commandments there are oich disugim, there's other types of commandments. Chukim are commandments you can't understand, there's no logic to them. But there's also other types of commandments. <clears throat> there are commandments or edus, religious commandments, eating matzah on Passover, or keeping Shabbat. Religious commandments, they strengthen the religion. Right? That own mishpatim, and there's also logical commandments that just strengthen day-to-day -day life. Don't kill, don't steal. Society. Because also a logical commandments. So there's commandments which are called mishpatim. Those are logical. They make sense. They've got a benefit to them. There's commandments which are edut. They have a, they're logical also. It's, it's religious, but it keeps the Judaism going. And then there's commandments called chukim, that they, they're not logical, they don't seem to help anybody, and they're certainly not furthering Judaism. They make no sense. They just, you know, it's a good reason to stop doing them. They just, no benefit. It says, but this Torah portion is called chukim. Chukim means the commandments that make no sense, but it's not talking about that. It's not talking about commandments. It's talking about learning the Torah. Chukim means learning the Torah. We can understand if the Torah, was, if it was talking about doing the commandments, because also, <clears throat> edus and mishpatim, the commandments which are called edut and mishpatim, the ones which are religious and understanding ones, vas haben oich atam, which they do have a reason, but you should do them with Kabbalah all. You should do really all the commandments essentially are not understandable. Even the logical ones that you do, don't steal, don't kill, you should really <clears throat> do it first and foremost because God commanded them. That's the real reason. So really all the commandments are sort of like chukim. They're sort of right, like chukim. They're not really understandable. the But here it says it's not talking about the commandments. Chukim doesn't talk. It's talking about the Torah. It's for verses of the Pasuk. Why does it say? Why does it call the Torah chukim? The Torah is not understandable. The Torah is dach be'ikar avana basach. The main thing of the Torah is to understand. Men darf harvidin. You have to work nitnor oifzu ein chazrin when vezin to repeat over and over the details and the laws of the Torah. Nor oifzu farstein zayin yet tami. Not just understand what the laws are, but understand why the laws are as much as possible. You have to understand the Torah. One second. This could be that my thing is not working. One minute. One minute, somehow or other, this thing is not working. Huh? Give me a minute here. Why? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, is it? there? Oh, I see, I see, I see. Here I am. Here's the picture. Good. Okay. Unchat is the mitzvah because of the commandments. Oh, what's it? I know what's it. Men darf you have to work hard in order to understand the Torah. So why call learning Torah here by the name of Bechukotai? It means you have to learn the Torah. Bechukotai means things that are not understandable, which you can't understand. Exactly the opposite. The main thing of the Torah is not like the commandments. The, thing, the commandments, you do them. If you understand them, it's very good, but it's not necessary. The main thing of the commandments is that you know that it comes from God. And you do the commandment. It makes no difference if it's putting out tefillin or giving charity or eating matzah on Passover. God said to do it, I do it. 
But learning the Torah, you have to understand. <coughs> you have to learn the laws. Vizay Zayin and Nisparis, like they're explained in Torah Shebechtav, in the written Torah, and also in the oral Torah, in the Talmud. Urchach is the mitzvahs, even though the, the commandments, Velcha, which are called by name of Chukim, is doch nit shayach to understand those commandments which are called chukim you can't understand. Varum because oyv zei because on them it says chuka chukakti v'gazera gazarti. God says I made a commandment, I made a law, and you haven't got permission to think about it. But if you start thinking about why is it that I can't eat milk and meat, then you're not going to do it. When God says to do something, these commandments, especially one of not eating milk and meat, the only reason you're doing it is because God said. But you say, why am I putting on tefillin? You can say, because that attaches your heart to God and your mind to God. You know, why should I not kill? Because it's, it's bad for society. God loves society, right? But if you say, why shouldn't I cook milk and meat? There's no answer. So those are chukim. Don't think about that. But this is just a small portion of the Torah. The rest of the greatest part of the Torah is understanding. So the, why call Torah by the language of chukim? It means learning Torah. Okay, we're going to get a good answer over here. You're going to see. Okay, so the Rebbe's question is, here the word b'chukotai means to learn Torah. And the word chukotai seems to be the opposite of Torah. The main thing of Torah is understanding. And chukotai means to just accept and not understand at all. Punkt vi Torah, just like Torah, Shabbatam, just like the written Torah, the main thing of the Torah is just reading it. Right? So there is a certain aspect of the of Torah that is just not understandable, namely reading the written Torah. It was therefore because there's a law that says that you can only make a blessing on a commandment if you do it. And the commandment of reading the Torah, you make a blessing on, even if you don't understand it. A person that gets called up to the Torah, and he doesn't understand what's read, he makes a blessing. Machta bracha, you make a blessing, even though you don't understand what's being read in the written Torah. Is a sach veinaker, but, but nevertheless, the written Torah is much, much less in, in, in quantity than the oral Torah. The oral Torah has what are the 20, 50 books, right, of... Uh, of, of the, the, the Talmud. And the written Torah has five books, and those five books are much smaller than the tractates are. Belchamen Muzdab Kafarstein. The main thing of the Torah is you have to understand. And when you learn the Torah, as men learned, and if you don't understand what it says in the Talmud, which that's you know 95% of the of the Torah, is if you don't understand it, is you can't make a blessing on it. You have to understand. Well, more, even though the main difference between the written Torah and the oral Torah is that the written Torah is very, very limited. You can't add on any more words. The limitations, though, of the oral Torah is nor in them versus showing Begilui Bapoel, the Talmud that's already written, right? That you can't say, I'm adding more ideas to the Talmud. You can't. But the oral Torah, to add on more ideas, you can write as many books as you want to. It's still part of the oral Torah. Of a mitzah dem, but by what is what is going to come out from the Torah, write the explanations, the midrash, etc. And you can write in your own ideas on the Torah. That's called the oral Torah. There's no limit to it. So if so, the oral Torah is a thousand times more than the written Torah. The written Torah is very, very limited. The Zalbersach also is the same thing in the written Torah itself. That part of the Torah, which is not explained the reasons, right? There are certain sentences in the written Torah which have no, they make no sense. All of the names of the tribes of Esav and of Yishmael. Their chilek, that part which is talking about also the chukim, also the parts of the Torah which are talking about not understandable laws. Like we said, the, the red cow, the red cow. This is much smaller than the part of the Torah which talks about the commandments which you can understand or tells about the stories about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those things you can understand. So if so, the question is just getting stronger and stronger. Why call 
learning Torah, which that's what this Torah's week's parsha's ta- portion is talking about. Why call it by the name of Chukotai? <clears throat> is dachnit for standing? So it's not understood the language bechukotai telechu in my statutes, in my carved out statutes. You should go. Then their pasuk when the Torah is talking about you amalim b'Torah, it says that what does it mean? What does bechukotai mean? It means that you should work at understanding the Torah. Why call it chukim? Why call it chukim? It should say clearly im b'Torotai telechu. If my in my Torah, you should go. Why does it say my chukim? You should go. Chukim are not understandable. Okay. They're Alta Rebbe. So now we're going to get a good answer for this. <clears throat> the Alta Rebbe in the Chuti Torah explains the Bechukotai, the word Bechukotai, what it means is carved out. Chakika. Oiske Christ. Under Pasuk, the sentence is telling us that working and learning the Torah has to be in a way that it's carved out inside of you. They're off to that the accomplishment from the letters, the, the, or the advantage of letters which are carved out is in the fact which not only are the letters uh, unified with what it's written on, so, not, not, not only are the letters unified, which what it's written written on. For instance, from the Belcher, the Mila the, is even also by the letters. That is also by the written letters. If you write a Sefer Torah, so the letters that you write on a Sefer Torah, they become soaked up a little bit, at least in the parchment. Chach the Osios Velcham is right because the letters that you write on a parchment, they become given an additional thing to the parchment that you're writing on, but a little bit they become very say Durch and Schreiben. When you write them, they do get soaked up a little bit in, in the parchment and they become unified, right? You open up the Torah scroll, the letters stay there. There's the same letters. So they are a little bit unified. True, when you carve it out, it's more unified. But the main thing of carving out, Bechukotai, the Torah is called. Chukotai, the Torah is called Bechukotai because the letters are carved out. What does it mean? That the letters themselves, the letters don't really have any existence on their own. Zanigan Samitzius, their whole existence is nor the Zach, Velcha, Zezav, and Oiskekritzt. Oh, so why is the Torah called Chukim when Chukim means laws that are not understandable and the essence of the Torah is to yes, understand it? Is because here there's another aspect of the Torah. The Torah should be carved out into your soul. What does that mean, carved out into your soul? It means not just that it's unified. It's not a separate book that's given by some person and makes up your religion and you get very interested in it and very involved in it and enthusiastic about it. But it becomes one with your soul. And not only that it becomes one with your soul, but the letters themselves are not a separate entity. The letters are very clear. But if you look at letters that are carved out, right, even if there's, they're, they're not painted in, the letters that are carved out are really not letters. They're just places where they're carved out. And there's, there's an empty space there, and that's what makes the letter. So the letter is not a thing in itself. It, so to speak, is made from the same stuff that the stone is made in, or here in case this case, your soul is made of. Well, this is the horror. This is the teaching regarding, regarding learning the Torah. And it's not telling you that a Jew which learns the Torah <coughs> should just <coughs> unite himself with the Torah. That type of learning is blaved a bazunder, means that you remain something, but the Torah is, re, is part of you. Right? Like a person who's a great mathematician or a great musician, right? A musician. And he can sit down, there's there's pianists, great pianists, that can sit down and play like hours of compositions of, you know, the greatest, most complex <coughs> compositions. Compositions, they just remember it all. It's just automatic in themselves. But that doesn't affect them personally in any way. It's not part of them. It's part of their soul, their ability to, I say, to, uh, <coughs> to, to play music. Their memory, 
but they personally themselves, right, the, the, what they like in life, the things get angry about, the things that that, that doesn't affect them. The whole essence, the tour, the music is something separate, and there is something separate. The subject, mathematics, is something separate, and they as a person are something separate. <clears throat> it says it shouldn't be that way with the Torah. A zoivi Torah, just like the Torah, just like the Torah Toshel Doag, like it says the Torah of Doag. Doag and Achitofel were two big enemies of King David. It says Doag was a genius in the Torah. Vazi is given, it says Mina Safa but his whole learning of Torah is from the lips and out. Right? There's people that could be, there were popes, there were experts in the Torah, there were geniuses. They were just geniuses. They could remember everything. There's people that have photographic memory. <clears throat> they were geniuses. They could look at even a telephone book and they could remember every word, every address. Right? I heard there's people like that. The same thing with the Talmud. They learned the Talmud and they understood everything in the Talmud. But they totally went against everything that's written there. The same thing that says with Doag. He was an enemy of King David. <clears throat> right? He knew that David was the chosen one of God. But nevertheless, he went against David. Why? He knew the whole Torah. <clears throat> but it says it was from his lips and outward. Is nit da bevorant men is nit da bevorant men im. It doesn't change him. The Torah doesn't change him at all. It just adds on another, how do you say, another another star on his, and his what is it, another level of you know, uh, he said, now he's a, it was a colonel, and now he's a general, and now he's a this. Da kumt men bevern, and here it's coming and telling you that the Torah is not something that you accomplish. As their limud darf zayin, it comes to tell you that the learning Torah should be carved out. What does it mean carved out? That when you learn the Torah, <clears throat> it's part of you. It's not an additional thing to you. Exactly the opposite. The letters are not an additional thing at all. They're just carved out into you. See, so, Izvenik, it's not sufficient, not enough. As Zayn Yichud, that you're learning the Torah is in an open, in such a way, zachen, like two separate things. Nor as Fardint, far, fardint Zich, Fardint Zich, it is demanded of you as Erzal Gar Nit Zayn Kain Metzius that you shouldn't be a separate thing from the Torah. Zayn Gansa Metzius, your whole being should be the Torah is carved out into you and you are carved out one with the Torah. So the it, Torah doesn't make you bigger. The Torah makes you smaller, so to speak. It takes away part of you. Your ego becomes less. <clears throat> Instead of becoming a, a colonel or a general or a three-star general or a four-star general, you become a private, you become a simple soldier. Let's just see, huh? That's what the Torah is supposed to do. It's supposed to carve out something from you. One second. Alderich, like it says by Moses. What it says by Moshe. One second. What does it say by Moshe? It says, Moshe Rabbeinu, their Makabal, he was the first one that received the Torah, was his given, <clears throat> and Azor Bittl, which he was so surrendered and unified with God, un yichud mit elokus, until he said, v'nachnu v'nasati eisei besada. If you look at the book of Deuteronomy, <clears throat> Deuteronomy, it's all spoken by Moses. It doesn't say God told me this. In all the other books in, in, in Shemot, in the, the, after God gave the Torah, so he tell, Moses would go up on Mount Sinai, or he would receive the Torah wherever he received it. Sometimes it was in the in the <coughs> in the in the tabernacle, Oel Moed, and God said Moses would come out to the people and say, "God spoke to me and said like this." God spoke to me and said this. In the book of Deuteronomy, it doesn't say that God spoke to Moses. Moses is just saying, "I." I, I am commanding you today. And he says, if you do my commandments, I will give the reins in their time. What Moses is giving rain? <clears throat> Not that I will put the grass in your field. While Shekhinah met the we told Corona, it says that Shekhinah spoke from the throat of Moses. And also the surrender of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Which he said, Reisi b'nei aliyah ve'em Im Shnaim, etc. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, I've seen 
high people that could save the whole generation. That if there's two, it's me and my son. If there's one, there's just me. Why? <clears throat> if there's one, it's just me. How could Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai praise himself so much? Chach as zogen shvachim vegen zich, because usually if a person starts praising himself, this is not a good thing. How could Rabbi Shimon praise himself so much and say, I can save the whole generation? Well, here is Nitka ben Kain It was like Moses saying in the book of Deuteronomy. He wasn't a separate thing on his own. His whole being was just pure godliness. Now you can ask a question, come on, how can you do a thing like that? I mean, a person can't be God. So the answer to that is really everything is God. The fact is everything in the world is God. And if we didn't have the Torah to tell us what we could worship, you could worship anything. You should worship trees. God is found in everything. But the Torah tells us we can't. <clears throat> we can't worship. So even though the, God was speaking through Moses, nobody worshipped Moses. Elijah the prophet enlivened, brought back from the dead 20,000, what was it, 30,000 dead bones. He brought them back. Nobody worshipped him. Everybody knew that it was godliness coming through him. <clears throat> but nevertheless, it was coming through him. He was like, you know, a television set, so to speak, that's totally surrendered to the program that's coming through it. He was not anything in himself. So that's ideally what the Torah is supposed to do. God put the Torah in the world, not as a separate <clears throat> instruction book to tell you how to get out of the world and go to heaven. And then if you don't do it real well, you're going to go to hell. Torah is here to show how precious this physical world is. That this whole physical world is really pure godliness. Like the Holy Temple. And the Torah tells us how to do it. And once in a while, there comes a person <clears throat> like Moses, and he really demonstrates in Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai that people also are the same thing. But the Torah is the vehicle by means of which this godliness is revealed in the whole world. That's why the letters should be carved out. It's part of you. That's the purpose of the Torah, if you want to say it has a purpose, is that the Torah is to show that the world and Hashem are one. There's nothing except for God. But when God is manifested, it doesn't mean the world goes away. It means the world is exactly the way it is, functioning the way it is, but it's functioning properly. V. showing Goret, like we said many times before, that all of the explanations in the Torah are joined one with the other. So it's understandable that when the altar Rebbe, when the first Rebbe said, Bechukotai Telechu, means being carved out, this is fitting to what it says simply, Bechukotai, the laws which are not understandable. Thus, says this means, as the limud lim, when a person learns the Torah, darv zayin and an orphan should be in a way of chukim. Then when you learn Torah, it should be like you doing the commandments, let's say, of not cooking milk and meat together. You do it just because God said. And it's true that a Jew has to learn the Torah and you have to understand the Torah and you have to work it with your mind. Oh, but thus gufa, but this, you do it with makal balasol. Don't think that you're learning the Torah because you're smart. And a person that's smarter, he's better at learning the Torah than someone else. Right? True, you're better at learning, you might know more, but the Torah is, the a point of the Torah is to, that you should not, you, when you do a, a put on tefillin on your arm, you're using your arm to serve God. Right? When, you, when you, <clears throat> you're saying Shema Yisrael, it's a commandment, you're using your speech to serve God. When you learn Torah, you're using your thoughts to serve God, your understanding. You're learning the Torah not for your own pleasure. It's good to have pleasure when you learn, but that's not the reason you're doing it. Because if the reason you're doing it, then when you don't have pleasure, you'll stop. Nor while the Ebishter, you're learning the Torah because God said that you should learn Torah. And you should do it in a way of understanding, to try to understand. So you're using your understanding, which is usually a very selfish thing, an egotistical thing. But now you're using your understanding to serve God, your understanding, and the ideas that you're understanding are not godly ideas. You're understanding about what happens if somebody steals somebody else's coat, and, and, and he claims that he didn't steal it, and it got burned, and he lo I lost it. And it was mitzad them, because of this, is done amalim the Torah. That's why you should be working in the Torah. Er Haravit, he works hard in learning the Torah more than what he wants. So the main thing in the Torah is not to accomplish and to get up to higher levels. And we're going to talk about that also, that it's a good thing. <clears throat> it's in the, it's, he has to work hard in the Torah. If a person learns Torah only because he really enjoys it, 
is, is their learning is learning means it'll be limited according to how great is his pleasure. Undan and then is by him nitakain amal. Then he's not working hard. He's enjoying every minute of it. And thus is the shaykhus from Peter Purushim. This is the connection between both. Durach dem limudat, by words of learning Torah, <clears throat> in an open and away from chukim, that it's carved out and it makes no sense. Sheti yu amolim v'torah, that you have to work out hard when you learn the Torah. Yeah. And the Torah, as kumter tzutzu dem zayin limud, that your learning should be in a way of from Chukika, that it'll be carved out. When you learn the Torah, because it's a commandment, so then you learn Torah, even if you don't want to. And even if you're tired, you don't understand. So you still nevertheless, you'll try to understand more, not because it'll make you a great person, and you'll become a Rosh Hashiva and everyone will praise you and they'll stand up when you come into the room. Exactly the opposite. It makes you smaller. You're giving yourself over, you're making God bigger. You're making Hashem bigger. And that's a very happy thing. Because it's the truth. <clears throat> so it says, if a person learns the Torah and uses his mind to understand, <clears throat> then, then the Torah will be carved into you. The Torah mamish, the Torah will be with you one really. There are a lot of examples of, of this. And there's there was Rabbi Steinman just recently. There was uh, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. I'm sure there's others. I'm not that familiar with the the, the, the uh, literature world. But there's a lot of them that they learn the Torah and it makes them more and more humble. More humble. And they learn the Torah only because God commanded. And it happens to be that they were also geniuses. But you could see that the humility was, was more than their genius. You saw, you saw that there was, a, it was, it was the learning of Torah came from, from love of God. And so therefore, when a person learns the Torah in such a way, that it means that he's not learning the Torah because he understands. He's learning the Torah because God says you should learn. <clears throat> and God also said you should understand. Then when a person learns Torah that way, he reveals the fact that the Torah is really carved out into the Jewish soul. Okay, so now we have to understand another thing. Why does it say that you should walk in my statutes? Statutes who understand that you have to learn the Torah in a way which is above understanding and that becomes carved into your soul. You become smaller. It takes away part of your egotism and becomes, reveals your true soul carved into. Good. But why does it say that if you learn the Torah, you will walk? You will progress. I just finished saying the opposite. You learn the Torah makes you smaller. Telechu means that you become bigger. You go up to a higher place. You're, you're moving. Says the Rebbe, Halicha is showing by a Zalchainim, when you says that you go, you make progress, this is by things in Velch, what is Faran, Chiluki, Madrigas, there's also the different levels. Telecho means you move from one place to a higher place. Valzei Zain and Farbunde, because they're connected with Hishtalshlus, the order of creation, whatever. That you go and Kochaz Adam, and a person becomes more intelligent and more, how do you say, great in learning. So Bechukosai is supposed to make you smaller, and Telechum means you get bigger. How does that work out? Is in Zay, Gayen, Gate there, Mensch, Medrega, Ladrega. Walking, if you walk in my statues, walking means you go higher and higher. The Dugma, for instance, in Midos, in uh, the character, emotions, is Shayech, Suzagan, you can say, as their gate. He becomes more and more mature. Steik, Medrega, Ladrega, you move up from one level to another. From Ahava, from a small level of love to God, to a bigger level of love from God, from being a small awareness of the Torah to a greater awareness of the Torah. Azoi Oich in Seichel, also in intellect. There's a small child, has small understanding, has bigger understanding. But we're talking about Chukim, is supposed to make you smaller and smaller. That's Kabbalah all, that's just accepting the yoke of God. Without understanding, how does that, how does that, uh, how, uh, how does learning the Torah, just because God said, that moves you up? It's supposed to make you smaller. We're, now we're saying it, telechu, you get bigger. 
So how is it that if you learn the Torah, not thinking about yourself, only thinking about God, and is that's going to make yourself bigger? Telechu, you're going to walk, you're going to move up, you're going to, how do you say, accomplish something. In the Kuti Torah, Taich, their, their Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe explains, as the word telechu, to walk, it hints at reward. Telechu. There's schar. What is the reward for learning Torah in a way of bechukotai? That you're doing it only because God says. You're understanding, you're using all of your understanding only because God says. The reward for learning Torah, bechukotai, if you do it in such a way, the reward is telechu, that you walk. You'll move up. What, is it? what does it mean? What does it mean? Was halicha amiti, the true walking, true moving, True progress is unlimited. Believable. Pashtus the Ketuv, the men learned, when you learn Torah in a cheder, when you learn Torah with, in, how do you say, grade school with children, is the Sipur, Schar, Hoib Tzichan, from Mersati Gishmech and Bitom. When you learn Torah with a small child, so you tell them about simple rewards. How do, what does it say in the Torah? If you learn my Torah and you do the commandments, then it's going to be good for you physically. Physically, you'll get good. You'll be, have progress. You'll be happy in life. You won't have problems. You want to, when they're telechu, and this is talking about, they get about us Adam, what you do. <clears throat> it's stated in the Kuti Torah. It says in the Kuti Torah is the Ikra, the main thing, from the faith of a Jew, is the madriga from Elokus, the level of God, vuseichel kanit masig. The ultimate highness of reward is a level which cannot be comprehended. In the dargos, in the levels which a person can comprehend, you can understand going to heaven or whatever that you can understand. That you can't understand as Muzai and Oy Hasada. You can there can be understanding. You can understand, you can understand things about heaven, hell. You can understand that. After that completion of understanding, vi hoich sein seichel can noch as high as your mind can understand. Let's say the Arizal, that he understood all these deep, tremendous, deep secrets of creation. Is the Hechlin Madrig is the highest level of of is, is the Hechra Dargos Vosichel can knit Masig Zain Dort is Ort the Muna says levels which are higher than understanding you have to open up a new uh, sense like you have five senses you have seeing and you have hearing you have taste. Those are five senses, but then there's more senses, understanding things. You can have a, a sense of, of like, of, uh, they say, business sense, sense of humor, right? Talents, people have talents, musical sense. They have senses. Oh, that's a different type. That's, <clears throat> with those type of senses, you can make new things. You can perceive new ideas in music and art and uh, intelligence. But there's things which are not understandable at all which can't be understood, then you have to open up a new type of a sense, not the sense of seeing, not the sense of intellect, but the sense of what's called emuna. In English, it's called faith. <clears throat> That's what it means, the emunas Yisrael, the difference between the faith of the Jews and the faith of the non-Jews, so to speak. By the non-Jews, the world, <clears throat> by non-Jews, the world is not a real true, umus olam, I'm sorry, by, by the non-Jews, umus olam, by the <coughs> Gentiles, their faith is not a true faith in God. Why? Because they believe, a Gloiben is, their belief is in a level which seichel is machriach, which intellect is understandable. The Reber, therefore, is Zayin and their faith is only in what's called Mamalik Homi, levels of creation. But yesterday I heard a whole lecture 
about it. And this is basically how the other religions work, but especially Islam works, especially the, the radical, right? That they teach the kids from a young age that if you do what you act like Muhammad acted, then you're going to go to heaven and there's tremendous pleasures. But if you don't, then there's going to be pain. You have no idea what pain there's going to be. And they bring all sorts of examples from the world. So in other words, and their faith is in things you can sort of understand. You know what pleasure is in this world? You'll get 20 times as much pleasure. You know what pain is in this world? You'll get 100 times more pain. Uh, you don't see it. You believe it. I believe. Right? You do what you're supposed to. You'll get good things. That's faith. <clears throat> because it does depend on faith. You can't see heaven. You can't see hell. But it's a level of faith which you can... What do they call it? Uh, you can, um, <clears throat> is the word extrapolate? There's a word like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> what you can derive from this world. Everybody's going to die. What happens after you die? You're just going to be nothing, right? Absolutely nothing could be, but maybe not. And if not, then you're in trouble if you don't do what I say. So there, that's faith. <clears throat> but it's faith that's sort of connected to the world. The level of godliness, which is comprehensible in mind, in Seichel, which is not the case by the Jews, their faith is, the, 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 the essence, the being of God. It doesn't make any difference what I receive. This is higher than any type of intellect. I'm doing what God wants, and that's the history of Judaism. We see that the Jews have been punished and they've been killed and they've been raped and they've been ex expelled from places and just terrible things happen, right? And because they're Jews, <clears throat> and they still remain being Jews. And even we see that the Jews, there's Jews nowadays that are wandering around, especially in, in the media, that they're anti-Jews and they're against Israel and they're against the Torah and they're against God, and they're against, but they're Jews. They say that, well, that that makes no sense. Oh, that's Judaism. That's Judaism. That it's something that's so real that nothing can get rid of it. Even you yourself. <clears throat> you can't get rid of it. It defies intellect. It makes no sense. It says that's what a Jew believes in. It doesn't care about heaven. doesn't care about hell. doesn't care about anything. The reason he cares about only one thing is being a Jew. What is being a Jew? Oh, that has to be defined. That's a little bit difficult. Right? That has to be difficult. According to the Torah, being a Jew means doing the commandments. Doing what God says. But why do you do the commandments? Why? Because that's what God says. <clears throat> Not because it's beneficial to you or because you're going to go to heaven or you're going to avoid hell. So that's the essence of faith of a Jew, waking this Jewish identity up that it brings you to some sort of a conclusion to do the Torah, do the commandments. That's faith in action. From them, from this, it's understandable as Vibalt in Seichel, that intellect is up, <clears throat> is all sorts of <clears throat> excuse me, that in intellect there's all sorts of levels, more greater understanding, like it says, it says greater and greater understanding, like it says, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, for instance, that he had the highest levels of understanding, but the day that he passed away was higher than all the other days. So if so, there's higher and higher levels of intellect, is what because understanding and grasping can get higher and higher. Is so it is also the truth with faith. In is hecher beginners, there's higher and higher levels of faith. Those things which you did yesterday only because of faith, suddenly oh you become <clears throat> the, tomorrow you can understand those levels. A rabka and you can understand. Unzain itzdekaramun and now your present faith has to be in things which are higher than God. Yesterday you were doing the Torah and the commandments in order to go to heaven because you believed in heaven. That's that was your faith. Today you think that was ridiculous. Why did I do things in order to go to heaven? And heaven is just a lower level. I'm doing it for the sake of, of God alone. Then the next day after that, you realize, whoa, I didn't know how amazing God is. I'll tell you a story about that. That's will be my story today. Lloyd <clears throat> Dem is first time it remind me, story of Reb Sad Yagon. Lloyd Dem, according to this, is understandable as he is shine halicha. If so, that's what it means in the chukotai, you'll walk. It, means, it doesn't mean you're going to walk and become bigger and bigger. 
It means Hashem will become bigger and bigger. You'll realize the greatness of God more and more. Vazayin HaSagi, your understanding and commandments, you will be understandable more. Alts Hecher Vert Bayim, higher the person goes, will be the Chukim, his surrender to God, his har harmony with the Ein Sof, with infinite. Thus was freer of that which yesterday was a way of hooking. You did it because it was not understandable. Hai shoin hain today will be nitkan hukim. It won't be a chok. <clears throat> You'll do it <clears throat> because it's understandable. It won't be a chok. You'll do it because you understand. It's a good thing to not, not eat milk and meat together. That's what God wants. <clears throat> but what does it mean what God wants? What is God? Oh, that's under, not understandable. That is the higher level of faith. The room because thus is showing a rupka kumen in the hasaga seichel. That which yesterday you did from faith, today you'll understand yesterday's faith will be a much higher thing. Azoivi megefint like we find by Moses, as the Eibishter had gezak that God said, lecha ani megalei tam para aduma. It says nobody can understand the secret of the para aduma, the red cow. It's called chukat Torah. That's the ideal, <clears throat> the ultimate chok which cannot be understood. God said, I'm going to reveal that to you. <clears throat> I can reveal the secret. It's from demos that from then on, by Moses, the paraduma is mer nit given a chuk. It wasn't totally a chuk anymore. It wasn't one of the chukim, the commandment. Men can over nit zagam. We can't say that by Moses, that he found, God forbid, that the Indian of chukim, that there wasn't such a thing as chukim. Of course there was. Nor by him is given their inyan from chukim and a hecher darga. That which yesterday he did only from pure faith, except kabbalat all, right? Today he does it because he understands what he was doing. But he realizes that still he has to do it from faith, but it's a totally higher level of faith. That God is much greater than what he thought yesterday. <clears throat> Thus, this means that's what our Torah portion is telling us. That if Shetiu Amalim Batora, that Chukotai means learning Torah, it means that you have to work hard at learning the Torah. Men Darf Halten and Ein Harvin, you have to work hard in learning the Torah, even if you don't want to, <clears throat> even if you're tired. Does even if you're not intelligent, you don't know. You have to. It says by Rabbi Akiva that he started learning the Torah when he was like forty years old, and he didn't understand anything, and he just was. And he went out in the field. He was all depressed, and he realized the Torah is the truth. And he knew what the world was like. And he knew that the truth can't be found in the world. He knew that it couldn't be found in spiritual things. He knew that the Torah contained the truth and he didn't understand anything. He went out into a field and he saw that there was a rock <clears throat> that had a hole in the middle and that water was dripping from some high place on this rock. And he realized that the hole had made a hole, that the, the water had made a hole in the rock. <clears throat> and he realized that it, because of perseverance that the water didn't stop dripping it made a hole. He says, if such a soft thing as water can make a hole in such a, can make, permeate, penetrate such a hard thing as a rock, as for sure a powerful thing like the Torah, it can penetrate something as weak as my mind. And he kept learning. He persevered. And he worked, worked really hard. As he worked hard, until it says that his soul almost went out. It's showing Heint Venik that what you did yesterday, and you put such a big effort and that you realize that today is not a, that today you realize that what you did yesterday wasn't enough. You have to have a higher understanding of the Torah. <clears throat> so therefore, it'll be a higher devotion to what's above understanding, a higher devotion to God. That means you're going to walk. There is Mahalik, you go and you become moving, you become alive, you become dynamic in your connection to God. In other words, you become smaller and smaller, and as a result, God becomes bigger and bigger. You become more of a vehicle for the infinite infinity of God and less of an egotist. <clears throat> and that's what the Torah does. The Torah is like the water, and it makes a hole inside of you, carved in. There's schar from them. The reward is when the gishmechem bitam. I will give the rain in their times. What does it mean? Olechetchem commute, and it will make you upstanding. Was that gain? This is talking about the gula. When it says, that's in this week's Torah portion, I'll give the reins in their time and you will go commute. You will go standing up. What does it mean standing up? It says, commute artsenu. This is talking about the future redemption. When all of the Jews will proudly stand up just because they're Jews, 
not because of their intelligence or their accomplishments, just because they're Jews and they're attached to God and God loves them, that will elevate, make every Jew stand up. Was don vet zayin the halicha? Then will be an unlimited movement upward. Yelchu michael luchael, going from strength to strength. Bizmen vet zochas on until we will reveal the highest possible revelation of godliness. But liyom shakula shabbos, the day that is totally shabbat. Umenucha lachay olamim, the raising of the dead and the highest possible levels of truth will be revealed in this world by means of our learning the Torah, understanding the Torah working at the Torah, because God wants to. And this will give us higher understandings of the Torah, higher understandings of God, and a more ability to change the whole entire world. Nice. Okay. Now, here's the Yom Yom. One second. 